Hey guys, it's nice to see you again. Thank you so much for always coming to my channel. It's always a pleasure to have you guys here. Um, it's because of you that I'm here. Uh, if this is the first time you are coming to my channel, perhaps through Google search or referral, whatever way that you happen to come to my channel, I am so, so excited to have you. Believe me, I am. I'm excited to have you here. Um, Please, I'll encourage you to click the subscribe button down there and then click the notification bell so that anytime I release new content, you'll be the first person to get that notification. Um, you wouldn't like to miss any of my content. And I would also encourage you to please like and share comments. If you find what I share with you guys, what I share with you here interesting and very impactful. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. I can't appreciate you enough for your kindness, for your love. Um, you guys are amazing for sharing this content, uh, for liking it and for commenting. Uh, please continue to share it so that others would also get the notification. Um, and I wanted to put it out here that if you are looking for a coach, a mentor, someone to guide you when it comes to Scrum and Agile, all you need to do is to reach out, okay? I provide free mentorship, free coaching, for anyone interested, even if you're already practicing as a Scrum Master and you just want to collaborate and share your knowledge and ideas and experience, please, by all means, reach out. You can look up here, you can find the information. You have my email address there. You have my social platforms. All you need to do is to reach out and I'm try as much as I can to respond to you, okay? All right, with that said, Let's jump into the topic of today. Can you see the content of, I mean, the title of today? We're talking about conflict. One of the fascinating, in fact, one of the interesting things I love working as a Scrum Master is ability to help. Helping not just in terms of, you know, for the team to keep building what they're building, but also in terms of the human interaction. The value-driven nature of the title or position of the Scrum Master is so rewarding helping the team to continue to become better okay now as far as agile is concerned team members are going to have some sort of misunderstanding miscommunication right there might be some fight i don't mean like physical fight i mean like psychological fight you know that's attitude or the human nature to resist to fight back or push back or to withdraw when something doesn't go their way or as planned or when things change along the way. It does happen. It even happens among peers, friends, even partners that are living in the same house or even siblings. It's, it's, this is a reality. Now, in my career as a Scrum Master, there are strategies I use. There are basically eight strategies I use to resolve conflict. And that is what I wanted to share with you, okay? Um, I know you are already practicing as a Scrum Master. You do have your strategies. Even as your coach, you do have your strategies, right? But how about you give me a listen here today? Would that be fair enough, okay? Now, I'll tell you a story. And then in this story, you can, before I jump into the strategy, in this story, you can see how um, some of these strategies can be filtered out, can be fleshed out, okay? Now, two stories, but I will share today one, okay? Just one. Now, this happens in the past, right? One of the things I encourage my team to do is to pair. There's an engineering practice called pair programming, right? When two developers are working on the same code, while one person um, is the driver, the other one is the reviewer. So it happens that I'm going to give them fictional names, right? This is fictional names. Philip and John. Philip is the driver, or Philip was the driver. John was the reviewer. Now, it happens that for Philip, John wasn't paying attention to the code. He would come late to work, and then he would leave early. And then he would build the code, but Philip would not review, and then he would break the code in the pipeline. So he got frustrated and he fled up and he used a foul language on John. Now, that is that was the story. But did he stop there? Absolutely not. 
John came to me as a scrum master saying, hey, John Bosco, um, this is what happened. I felt so I felt so offended. I feel so insulted, blah, blah, blah. I listened to him. I didn't utter a word. I made sure he vented out his anger, He all of those. I told him, at the end of the story, I said, okay, um, can I think it through? He said, oh, sure. I went to um, the other guy, Philip, and, and I listened to his own part of the story. He vented out his anger, told me what happened, narrated his story. Having listened to both parties, I asked if it was okay for me to bring it to the rest of the team. And they said, yeah. So I scheduled a time for the team to have this conversation. Now, first of all, the team listened to both parties and then came up with potential solutions. First, that Philip has to apologize to John. Secondly, is that the team will come up with team core hours. Now, team members were distributed, remember? And every team member, they were working in different time zones, okay? Now, notwithstanding the different time zones, there must be a team call hour where everybody must be working in order to collaborate. The fourth potential solution was to have a team working or team agreement, some sort of in a reference guide that will keep each other accountable. And at the end, not only that John felt happy, but the team continued to provide value, deliver increments, and everybody felt that their voice were heard and respected. Now, what do you think about this story? Do you think there is something I could have done better, or maybe there are some things I could have, I could have, I could not have done? Now, I would love to hear your feedback in the comment section. Now you have listened to my story. Let's talk about some of the strategies, right? I have implemented and I am using in my career in order to resolve conflicts. Okay. Now sit tight and let me share those with you. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to share with you guys the eight strategies you can definitely see on my screen. The first one is to have an open dialogue, right? I have said this in one of my videos that psychological safety is such a key thing. Make it so, so very, very um, welcoming for your team members to feel safe, to express their feeling, to express their emotion. And anger is, is one of those emotions, okay? Right? So open dialogue, make it safe for your team members to tell you what is really happening. Number one. Number two is active listening. Sometimes people are distracted. In fact, I do realize that we solve a huge number of problems just by listening. I have heard this story said often and on in different ways that the reason why we have one mouth and two ears, because that way we are required to listen more and speak less. Is that true? Depending on your answer, what I come to realize that by listening attentively, rapt attention to your team members could help to resolve a problem. In fact, I've had a friend who told me some time ago that <clears throat> one of the things he kind of finds it so interesting is to sit around me because I used to listen. When my team members talk to me, I don't even do any other thing. I don't touch my keyboard. I am always looking right in front of my camera. I am not doing anything just to listen. Facilitated workshop, this is not like the traditional workshops. This is more or less like an opportunity for the team to discuss that conflict, right? Find a time for the team, it could be yourself and the dev lead or the product owner or the parties involved to discuss that conflict. Feedback. John, don't just wait to, till the end of the sprint to talk about what has happened. Absolutely, things are going to get worse, in my own opinion. Find some sort of a way, a mechanism to understand what is happening each sprint. Now, five whys. This basically means Keep asking why. If I would this, if that just says somebody says, um, I don't think that I could work with this person. Ask, okay, it's okay to work not to work with this person. Why do you think you cannot work with this person? From the response the person gives, then keep saying why. Keep asking why. And it doesn't mean that you will stop at the fifth why. The mechanism or the rationale is 
even before the person, even before you have asked the fifth why, you have already gotten to the root cause or you got the answer. So these are just for you to arrive at the root cause of that problem, the five whys. Team agreement. This is more or less, I mean, you have to understand it from the religious point of view, like the Ten Commandments. We have laws, we have rules and regulation. Almost every institution do have rules and regulation. So the team agreement is some sort of document that the team, not the scrum master, will draft it for the team. The team members will sit together and draft it, what appears to be the do's and don'ts. So with the team agreement, they should be able to highlight if X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z happens, what should the team do? And it should contain things like the DOR, definition of ready, definition of done, asset, all of those components that makes up the Scrum process, okay? Thought party. When you can handle it individually, collectively, then the next step might be to involve key stakeholders. You're not reporting the individual or involved parties. No, actually not, absolutely not. You're looking for a mechanism to resolve conflict just in case things fall out of hand, all right? Involve the you the key persons you think that their presence could help, could be an influencing factor to resolve the problem. The last but not the least is having a private conversation like the one-on-one -on -one conversation. When I do join a new organization, one of the first thing I do is to meet up with my team members to understand what the challenges they are facing from each individual standpoint. And then I have to meet everybody collectively. So when problems do happen, find time to meet the involved parties. Listen, if you need to make notes, do make notes and do have a follow up. These are the eight strategies you could potentially use to help you to resolve conflicts. Now that you have had these, I have shared with you these eight strategies. Which of these eight strategies do you think is the most efficient? Which one have you used in the past or you're currently using? Which one do you think should not fall into any of those? Now, if you have used any strategy that I didn't mention, can you just let me know in the comment section and let's all learn together. You are generous. I know you're going to help me to do that, right? Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for spending these few minutes with me. You are so amazing. I love spending this time with you it's because of you that I'm here. If you like my content, please share click the like button and comment so that others will continue to uh, benefit just like you are. Thank you. I so appreciate you. I hope that I will see you next time. In the meantime, stay well. Bye for now.